I don't know about you, but I feel like Sorochi has finally explained why some series don't have nipples. At long last, the time for Yorozuya to reunite is here. Well, technically it is, but not properly. They do work together, but their mind isn't connected like old times. The teases continues. Despite the obvious changes since chapter 1, they have been the best of bros, and nothing can change that. This was a satisfying chapter, with its build up for a proper and complete reunion, a fun action that told its differences yet remained familiar, and a few surprises that had me quite amused. Not a moment later, Hichikata is already being interrogated by the ladies. If only he remained cool before. Now, he's about to feel what Gintoki has suffered. As expected, it's humorous with Hichikata sealing his lips on Gintoki's whereabouts, no matter how many mayonnaise they can throw at him. That's right, his torment involves with mayonnaise. Eh, that's like him alright. I laugh at Yamazaki, who technically betrayed him by siding with the heroines, like he has been on their side all this time. What a twist. Crispy old man. I can never get tired of the use of KFC puns. You would think Hijikata would be strong enough to prevent from submission. I can see multiple tries that would eventually force him to spill out. Nope. It only took one try, and not only he spills the bean, but for whatever reason, he has become a jar of mayonnaise. I guess he's a god now? Funny because now he doesn't even know what's so appealing about mayonnaise. Wow, that torture is incredible. Now the heroines know about Gintoki's whereabout, Otai is going after Shinpachi to tell him. Now that's going to be interesting, but is it needed? Because of the next scene, the main hype is the Yorozuya's reunion. Kagura is not there, but... It is a start with Shinpachi alone, considering that he was the first new member. Let me tell you, those three pages have to be the most gut-wrenching experience of the arc so far, and there's no action involved. It's all about the two making their first move to interact. It only takes one. It's quite the experience how the chapter slowly goes over the scene with each movement. When Shinpachi stopped, it was heart pounding. It had me pleading for anyone to say something, anything. What makes it tense is how one of them actually wants to move instead of running away or continue to hide. That's more effective in character storytelling. Gintoki wanted to say something, but couldn't do it. He was shaken, probably due to fear of many things. Shinpachi wanted to say something as well, but chooses to move along. He stops again with a second thought but ultimately move forward. Perhaps he felt it was too good to be true. It is possible that he may know that it's Gintoki, but maybe he's not ready? It's tense and somewhat heartbreaking once they move on. You can grasp that Gintoki is disappointed at himself, unable to contact. Oh, why we had to wait longer? Why, Gorilla? The atmosphere suddenly changes with Noraku, arriving and attack Gintoki. Well, that's not good at all. That means the next phase of serious action is here, with Noraku already in Edo. Right? I was cursing at Sorochi for dismissing the reunion, but that quickly changes when Shinpachi returns to tag along with Gintoki without acknowledging him. Now I am praising him to high heaven. Seriously, there's an undertone that maybe Shinpachi does know is him. Regardless, we are treated with a team in a fun action. I really like how you can tell the differences with Shinpachi's skills. Two years ago, his fighting style was portrayed like a novice but growing talent, which later on became slow and thoughtful. Now, he can keep up with the flow of Gintoki's style, as well as being agile to invade and fight swiftly. Being ranked at number 7 at the pole? There's so much justice. I also like how he stays true to the code of Yorozuya always butted in like no one's business. You taught him well, Gintoki. You taught him well. Thankfully, the comedy isn't over yet. Just before Shinpachi uncovered his identity, he got so desperate for a disguise that he takes a loincloth from a downed enemy and wears it to cover his face. Behold, the birth of Lion Cloth Mask. 
He's going to be in a stealth video game one day. That, and he apparently has undies fetish. Huh. Shinpachi's reaction is funny, feeling like he chose the wrong side. I'll say. As nice as it was to see them working together, it sadly has to cut short because Gintoki is a good man to put his life over his own. Just before I was about to feel sad for the short reunion, the boss appears and orders his man to aim for Shinpachi. It got serious now, right? Actually, this is a plot twist. They're not Noraku. They're working with that mysterious man. Then, the reveal. It's been two years, but finally, Shachi has returned and he wants to kill Shinpachi for being a fake. Hilarious. It's so kind of Shachi to honor Gintoke as his precious buddy and would take out anyone who tried to imitate him. I can't stop laughing at Gintoki's face that reads, oh, You got to be kidding me. In a single panel, Sachi is taken out by his precious buddy. The series can now conclude. Well done, Shorji. So to recap, those guys are Noraku and their weapons are bamboo swords. That means the serious aspect is saved for later. But that's a relief. Now then, why the hell did it take this long for Sachi to reappear? Maybe Sorochi finally remember. There's actually a backstory for Sachi. It starts off sincere with his recollection with Gintoki, who he is thankful to meet with him. After all, if it wasn't for him, Sachi wouldn't have a dream of becoming a successful mangaka. Good times. It got a bit depressing when he talks about life in prison during the war. It's messed up that the guards just abandoned the place and let the prisoner burn. Sachi's hope was about to be perished and he was trying to finish one thing before his life may end. It was rather touching. That is until I learned more about his could have been, but should have been, last action. It's not that he was working on something meaningful, like writing a farewell letter or trying to escape. He was so busy to find a screen tone for the nipples. Yeah. He should have just burned in hell for all I care. Someone did save the prisoners, but under an oath to atone their sins and return back once it is normal, or else a Shinigami will take their life. When I saw the mask, I was marking out. Finally, once again, it's been two years, but Asaima makes her return. Well, in a flashback, but it's a sign of hope. That was nice of her to give prisoners a chance to atone their sins, which would explain Sachi joining the war to help, right? I love how self-aware this series is. Sorochi actually mocks himself with the two missing characters that appear once in the war, or to be precise, volume 68. This tells me that he had a long-term plan all along, since the remaining characters didn't appear until now. I wonder what would have happened if this series was cancelled. <laughs> like that would happen. This begs the question though. Where were Sachi and Asaimon during the war? Sachi had a convincing and heartwarming story of his triumphant return to Edo. He struggled and thought if he had the rights to leave and persuade to redeem himself. But that's a nice character development. Then, he just had to end the damn story with his newfound purpose to fight. To grab all number 61 screen tones for the nipples. So in other words, he went off to grab all screen tones while the war was going on in which could have legit ended the world. This guy has no sense of priority. So much for atoning his sins. Asaima was following him for a reason I thought to back him up, but instead, she was spectating until it's time for a punishment. Seriously. On the positive note, she does appear at the end, and this time we finally get to see her new look. Find me here and now, because I will say this. She looks drop dead gorgeous. I'll go as far as saying the most prettiest of the heroines. Okay, it's all debatable. Who knew a longer hair will raise her beauty level? I'm like the last panel with the reaction. Except I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's hot. So to recap once more, the not Naraku are prisoners. Sachi's goal was to collect all number 61 screen tones for nipple instead of fighting a war. And Asaimon, now the beauty title holder, 
was chasing him during the war. That makes perfect sense. Sorochi is a clever gorilla to hint a connection of the two with a fascination on nipples. The timing and execution couldn't be any better. Well played. This was a pretty entertaining chapter that satisfied the fans while keeping the hype intact. It's not exactly Yorozuya's reunion, but it would do for some amusing segments. As fun the action was, it was hilarious how the serious tone flipped with the twist. Sachi is finally back with a face palming yet humorous reason for his long absence. A Simon returned as well, now praying for the series to go on forever with her in the spotlight. Ahem. The journey of the Lion Cloth Mask will continue. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. You know what I said two years ago? I feel like I really meant it in our timeline. I think it has been two years ago. Well, regardless, it's great to see them two, especially I Simon. Who do you think has the best look in this time skip? What do you think is going to happen with the situation on nipples? Yeah, it's Gintama, all right. Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.